Hello, and welcome to this exciting episode of Ranking the World's Worst People. In this channel, we walk you through the life and evil acts of the worst people in the world, and then we rank them at the end of each episode. Our goal is to put all the worst people who've ever lived in one single league with videos that let you know exactly what they've done. In today's episode, we'll be taking a look at Queen Mary. She would send hundreds of her subjects to burn at the stake for what she believed was right, a vision of England restored to its traditional Catholic faith. And those who disagreed would be burned alive as heretics, but Mary believed that such resistance would be short-lived. Just over a year after Mary came to the throne, amid high ceremony and high emotion, the schism was ended and England was joined once more to the Mother Church in Rome. Andrew Carnegie once said, immense power is acquired by assuring yourself in your secret reveries that you were born to control affairs. Some people were born as leaders and some others had to assume leadership roles by any means possible and at any cost. When people get the power that they so much desire, whether they deserve it or not, the way they use it goes a long way in painting a clear picture of how they really are. Queen Mary Tudor assumed the throne and got the power she desired, but how did she use it? How did she go from being loved to being hated? How did she come about the name Bloody Mary? Continue watching this video to find out. But just before we get into that, we would love to hear your opinion on what score she deserves. So leave a comment after you've watched this video to let us know what score you'll give to this hated queen. Also, click on that like button now because you're definitely gonna like this video. Who was Mary Tudor? Mary Tudor was the fifth child of King Henry VIII and Catherine of Aragon but she was the only one who was able to survive into adulthood. Mary took the throne in 1553 after the brief reign of her half-brother, Edward VI. She sought to return England to the Catholic Church and stirred rebellions by marrying a Spanish Habsburg prince. But she's most remembered for burning nearly 300 English Protestants at the stake for heresy, earning her the moniker Bloody Mary. She died at St. James Palace in London on November 17th 1558. Early Life and Struggles Mary Tudor was born on February 18, 1516, at the Palace of Placentia in Greenwich, England. However, she was the only child out of five of King Henry VIII and his first wife Catherine of Aragon to survive through childhood. She was baptized as a Catholic shortly after her birth. Educated by an English tutor with written instructions from the Spanish humanist Juan Luis Vives, Mary excelled in music, science, philosophy, theology, and language. In 1525, Henry named Mary Princess of Wales and sent her to live on the Welsh border. During this time, Henry continuously tried to negotiate a marriage for her. At age six, she was betrothed to Charles V, the King of Spain and Holy Roman Emperor. Charles broke off the engagement after three years, but remained a lifelong ally. Everything went on seemingly well until Henry became increasingly frustrated by the lack of a male heir. After several miscarriages, three stillborn children, two of whom had died in their infancy, Mary's mother Catherine had painful experiences when it came to pregnancies. Henry realized that Catherine would not be able to supply him with a son and therefore wanted to leave her. In 1533, Henry sought permission from the papacy to end his marriage, a proposal that the Pope vehemently turned down. Driven by desperation for an heir, Henry declared his marriage to Catherine null, claiming that because he had married his deceased brother's wife, the marriage was incestuous. He immediately broke relations with the Catholic Church, asserting that England's king should be the sole head of its church. He established the Church of England and he became the sole head of its church an illegitimate princess. In 1533, Henry VIII married one of Catherine's maids of honor, Anne Boleyn. After Boleyn bore Henry a daughter, the future Elizabeth I, she feared Mary would pose a challenge to the succession of the throne. She began pressing for an act of parliament to declare Mary illegitimate, 
and she was successful. Mary was demoted from her household and forced to take up residence with her infant half-sister, placing her outside the succession to the throne and forcing her to be the lady-in-waiting to her half-sister Elizabeth. Catherine still tried her best to restore her daughter's succession to the throne, however, she couldn't. In fact, this caused her to be banished, and Mary was declared a bastard. These events had a devastating effect on Mary, who was once adored by both parents. This was the last time Mary saw her mother. All the love and compassion that Mary had become accustomed to as a child were all gone. Everything that Mary was used to changed. She had lost everything. Anne Boleyn, Mary's stepmother, treated her with extreme cruelty, even threatening to have her executed. As expected, all these things took a toll on Mary, largely affecting her adolescence. She suffered premenstrual tension her whole life. Her periods were infrequent or absent altogether. But through all this, her mother's influence stayed with her. She inherited her piety and love of religion from her mother. Mary didn't have many people there for her, but she believed in God, yet it could not replace what her family had originally given her. The different women that Mary's father kept getting involved in didn't help Mary either. The only woman to whom Mary became somewhat close to was the one who supplied him with a son, who died just weeks after. She became very sad and started to lose hope in God because she had lost all those that were close to her. Mary and her mother were separated, so when Catherine passed away, Mary did not have a chance to see or talk to her, and she never forgave her father's wife for that. In 1536, Mary had Boleyn beheaded for treason, and he married his third wife, Jane Seymour, who finally gave him a son, Edward. Seymour insisted that the king make amends with his daughters, but he would only do so if Mary acknowledged him as head of the Church of England and admit the illegality of his marriage to her mother, Catherine. Eventually, Mary was forced to deny the Pope's authority and her legitimacy. Although Mary did re-enter the royal court, her religious beliefs made her a lightning rod for conflict. Ascension and Reign When Mary's father, Henry VIII, got ill, he declared that Edward would be his heir, and Mary be the next in line if the young Edward died without having a child of his own. Henry VIII died on January 28, 1547 and nine-year-old son Edward VI assumed the throne as king. Edward VI remained a minor for his entire six-year reign. He was a supporter of the Protestant faith, but Mary hoped one day he would realize why their father had made that decision concerning the Catholic Church in the first place. She was also hoping that Edward would return England to the Church of Rome. Since Edward was a minor, the Lords of Somerset and Northumberland served as his regents, working to expand his father's ecclesiastical changes. Eventually, Edward began to show signs of illness, and his regents feared Mary's return. They all worked on convincing Edward to leave his crown to his cousin, Jane Grey. They altered the order of succession to favor the Protestants, placing Henry VIII's niece, Lady Jane Grey, next in line to the throne. Edward VI died on July 6, 1553 and it was announced to Lady Jane Grey that she was the new Queen of England when only 16. At first, Jane refused to claim the throne, but with time, her father, Henry Grey, and her husband convinced her. Although the King's death was kept a secret for some days, Jane was proclaimed Queen the Tenth. The people were not in support of this, as they all wanted Mary, the legitimate heir to the throne, assuming it. All the while, Mary had already received news about her brother's death, but she needed proof that her brother was actually dead so she could claim her throne. She knew that she could not declare herself queen unless she has the confirmation of her brother's death. Otherwise, she could be accused of treason. As soon as Mary got confirmation of her brother's death, she went to Flamling Castle in Suffolk, which was safer for her, where she stirred up the local population who disliked the Duke of Northumberland for having suppressed a rebellion in Suffolk during Henry's time. Their help was offered on the understanding that she would not alter the religion that Edward VI had already established. The Privy Council in London realized their mistake and declared Mary Queen of England. Mary left Flanglem for London on July 24th to claim her throne. On October 1st, 1553, Mary assumed the throne. The people were ecstatic to hear that Mary would be the new queen. Although, some people thought that it was all a plan of hers so she could become in power. 
they were nervously waiting on the changes that Queen Mary would slowly make. There had been rumors about all the things that Mary wanted to change, and disputes in the society were beginning to form. This made Queen Mary crack down even more and make drastic plans and follow through with them. After taking the throne, Mary quickly reinstated her parents' marriage and executed Northumberland for his role in the Lady Jane Grey affair. Her initial ruling council was a mix of Protestants and Catholics, but as her reign progressed, she grew more and more fervent in her desire to restore English Catholicism, a marriage that didn't work. In 1554, she announced her intention to marry Prince Philip of Spain, the son of Charles V. This caused an insurrection amongst Protestants who feared the permanent loss of Henry's reforms, and for those who suspected a Spanish king would inevitably herald a continental takeover of England. Still, Mary moved forward with her plan, persuading Parliament to assent after Charles consented to leave Mary in full control and to keep the throne in English hands if the Union produced no heirs. The marriage to Philip went on as Mary wanted, but it was almost as troubled as her father's unions. It was an arranged marriage, and Philip was simply following orders. He was in no way attracted to Mary. Philip's plan was to gain England as part of the Habsburg Empire. She also never spent too much time with her husband, Philip II of Spain. Neither Spain nor England agreed with the marriage. The couple communicated in Latin, as none of them could communicate in English or Spanish. Mary then led Philip through many false pregnancies. This was due to her irregular periods, and she was now entering menopause and developing a stomach tumor. Once Philip realized Mary couldn't reproduce, he barely spent any time in England with her. He also never shared part of his vast New World trade network with England, instead dragging England into military conflict with France, one of the most powerful nations of Europe at the time. Few questioned the authenticity of the news of Mary's miscarriage, but she honestly believed herself. Philip left England, saying that he wouldn't return unless he was crowned king. The queen was never going to let that happen, so the union inevitably ended. Mary Tudor becomes Bloody Mary. Queen Mary Tudor is inarguably one of the most hated queens in British history. During her reign, she did things unthinkable. She soon moved from simply reversing the anti-Catholic policies to actively persecuting Protestants. In 1555, Queen Mary revived England's heresy laws and began burning offenders at the stake, starting with her father's longtime advisor, Thomas Cramer, the Archbishop of Canterbury. Apart from the Archbishop, almost 300 convicted heretics, mostly common citizens, were burned at the stake. So many others died in prison, and some 800 fled to Protestant strongholds in Germany and Geneva. To add to that, Mary pursued whoever called her illegitimate, and her parents null and absolutely void. Bloody Mary prohibited priests from getting married. She preserved the Tudor session, maintained the navy, and reformed the militia. Mary is remembered for restoring England to Roman Catholicism. While she strengthened the parliament by using it for religious settlement, established the gender-free authority of the crown, and restored the structure of the church. Illness and death. In 1558, Mary fell ill, suffering from an illness that may have been from uterine or ovarian cancer. England had just lost a battle to France, and there was an outbreak of an influenza virus. Mary believed that this was God's way of condemning her for her policies and sins she committed. Mary could not find happiness with herself. Disappointment flooded her mind and she couldn't accept herself being a failure. She died at St. James Palace in London on November 17, 1558, and she was buried at Westminster Abbey. Her half-sister, daughter of Anne Boleyn and Henry VIII, succeeded her throne as Elizabeth I. What do you think? It's obvious that Queen Mary went through a series of hard times before, during, and after her reign. Her hardship and background struggles helped her achieve her role as the queen, but it also served as a major influence of her seeming misuse of power, making her less desirable. Queen Mary is remembered as being cruel. However, some may say that England's first queen, the ultimate definition of being the queen of distress, they claim that Mary's reputation was wrongly constructed after her death, as well as the fundamental place that Protestant identity came to take in British identity. 
This set of people say that calling Queen Mary Tudor as Bloody Mary is not only harsh, but also unjust. Considering that her father had a lot more people killed during his reign as King of England, as well as Queen Elizabeth who succeeded her. We'll let you choose which side you want to. Do you think that for having innocent Protestants burned at the stake, Queen Mary deserves to be called Bloody Mary? Do you think it was wrong for her to have been called that name, since other members of her family the same or more than she did? Let us know what you think in the comments section below. Ratings. Bloody Mary had a childhood that is expected of royalty, but things turned around for worse. She was demoted from the title of princess to lady. She lacked that parental love and care when she probably needed it most. She had underlying health issues throughout adolescence. She had to fight her way back to the throne that she was the rightful heir to. However, she might have had the opportunity to do better. She probably didn't need to execute people for their opposing beliefs. So, going by our ratings where one is refusing to tip and a hundred is being the worst human who ever lived, we would give Bloody Mary... 29. How would you rate the first Queen of England? Leave a comment in the comments section. We'll count all the scores at the end of the season to make the final league. Don't forget to like this video, press that subscribe button to get updated on our next video, and feel free to watch one of the other episodes. Maybe this one about Jim Jones, the man behind the Jonestown Massacre. Or this one about Albert Fish, the serial killer that is leading our ranking league at the moment. Also, if you want to help us decide who we rate in the next season, join our Patreon site and see all the contesters. You'll be able to vote, see footage we couldn't post on YouTube, and even get some exclusive merch. That's all for today. See you next time. Goodbye.